What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are doing a mock draft for the Buffalo Bills. I'm still thinking about whether I want to do the records prediction video post COVID opt uh, COVID-19 opt outs, which I probably will. Um probably will be tomorrow's video if we're going to be 100% fair. Just because I'm running out of other ideas per day. Um again going to do some dark horse videos. Uh Camel Wolf's been pretty much saving my ass here. Uh, with all these video ideas, and I need you guys to help me out too. Yeah, this guy cannot carry the entire damn channel. So, um, thank you again to Cam Wolf for that. But without further ado, let's kick this video off. Let's have some fun. Uh, all right. See what happens. Anything interesting happens, we can obviously comment on it. Trey Lance going before Justin Fields. Obviously, an interesting twist. But I mean, hey, the guy did not throw an entire pick last year in like the forty something, uh, forty two touchdowns that he scored. Overall, that's pretty solid here. Devontae Smith to the Bears is quite an interesting one as well. Okay, wow, Marvin Wilson moved down to 17. That is very interesting. So at 19, um, I think, honestly, the main thing that the Bills need is some more youth at the wide receiver core. So, I mean, I'm I'm very excited to see Rondale Moore here, but we took him in the last draft. So I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit hesitant to do that. But Sean Wade is here, and... A solid cornerback is again needed on this team. I'm pretty sure Levi Wallace is coming up, and we cannot uh, we cannot expect that the corners for the Buffalo Bills are going to continue their extreme high talent level next to Tre'Davious White. So I think a guy like Sean Wade has insane potential, especially at slot cornerback. So we're definitely going to take him. Just continue to add to this corner core, add some rotation. That would be, I think the best choice for them also i mean it's actually kind of cool to see that they're actually changing the rankings as time is going on walker little finally is back into like a late first early second type uh territory they had him down in like the um early third and i thought that was extremely disrespectful to him so i'm very happy that they changed that jamie newman in the second round is complete ass cheeks uh sorry it's just it is uh, okay so very interesting turn of events here so, uh, honestly, guys, I, I'm very interested in both uh, in Jalen Mayfield as well as Brevin Jordan. And Dawson Knox is a solid off, uh, solid tight end, but I don't know if he's a number one tight end. Brevin Jordan might be just too good to pass up here. I think he is, honestly. At 29, I mean, to me, he's an easy like end of the first type player. So, if you're getting him end of the second, that's excellent value for your pick. Continue to add weapons. And plus, with Josh Allen's running ability... Adding more tight ends that can add as weapons in the short game as well as in blocking downfield might be the best option for this team. Continue this power run style of offense. Um, Josh Allen, I don't trust him the best as a passer, so keeping it short, keeping it to the big guys, I think is the best choice for the Buffalo Bills, and I think that that will lead to the most success. At 83, um, guys, I'm going to be going... Joe Tryon here. This guy has so much potential. You guys should watch some tape on Joe Tryon. He's an athlete among athletes. Brock Purdy going to the Steelers is a great pick. I like that one. But, um, yeah, Joe Tryon is one of these guys who has an insane amount of a potential, but I don't really trust his floor. So he's definitely uh, much more of a project, which on the Bills, that's something that they can develop because they're a very good defensive team. And if you're able to get the maximum potential out of uh, somebody – like a try on, then you have you have a very good type of player there, and he is almost scarily similar to Daniil Hunter. If I'm gonna be honest, just like this very powerful, very speedy edge player that has so much potential. Except of course, uh, Daniil Hunter had a lot more, like a much higher floor than Joe Tryon does. But I'm saying the ceiling is very similar. Speaking of. Um, the man himself, Xavier Thomas, is very similar to, um, I can't, Daniil Hunter. I literally just blanked on his name randomly after I said it like six times. So, at this spot, I I mean, I, I kind of want to go Monty Rice again, but Ventral Miller's not bad at all. I, I kind of like the idea of getting a uh, linebacker at this spot, but let's just see if maybe we can kick a tackle into guard or something. If anything sticks out here, obviously we'll pick him, but... Uh, I don't really see anything too exciting at this point. So let's just continue checking out these weapons here. And honestly, we're going to be going... Let's look at Cordell. At 312 pounds, former two-star. Is that even a thing? I didn't. I thought it was only three, four, and five-star. But um, saying as, 
I, okay. I mean, the, like lateral movement is something that you can, um, angles and position are inconsistent. That's honestly great for taking a shot at a guard. Like it's somebody that you can kick in and not have to worry about him taking the wrong angle because of the fact that he has two guys around him. That's an excellent pick in my opinion for being able to get somebody who is uh, a high end potential talent at guard. So kiss me in the ass if you don't like it. I'm sorry. Hate to, I'm not going to be the best um, drafter out there in everybody's mind, but right here we're taking Elijah Vera Tucker. This guy to me is the third round prospect and uh, he's just an absolute beast. PFF loves this guy. And we're actually going to have him in at guard. Much higher chance. I totally forgot about him, to be 100% fair, until I was like, wait a second. where's what? I wonder if the USC guy is still out there. I know this, the pick said that he's worth way lower than that, but in my mind, he's a third-round prospect. This is kind of what I would do logically, and we're, we are definitely not going to let him go at that point. So here on... Ooh, Oh, we're with the Vikings. Honestly, we're going to go Marquez Stevenson. That would be a great pick, honestly. That would be excellent. That would be the perfect pick for that team. Um, we'll do the Vikings probably soon after this. But now um, this is an interesting spot because, honestly, we're going to go Lorenzo Neal right here. If I'm not mistaken, um, shit, I forgot who their interior defensive lineman is, their D-tackle this year. I, I don't think it's Sheldon Richardson, but it might be Michael Pierce. That might be the one. But that's a perfect person for, uh, for I believe we got Lorenzo Neal, for him to learn from and any interior defensive lineman to learn from for that matter. So being able to bring in a young guy, it just increases the chance that he will hit his potential. So why the hell not, right? Let's see, do we even have, I don't think we have a seventh round pick, guys, if we're going to be honest here. So that might have been the very last pick of the draft. Somebody who has a very high high floor, given the fact that Michael Pierce might still be there. So, I mean, again, this this draft obviously wasn't a very large one, and the Bills don't have that very like that's, they don't have a lot of needs. So they're kind of playing, they're kind of cooking with Crisco here, guys. So um, you got your starting cornerback of the future, being able to pair him up with Tre'Davious White is an excellent option. Uh, you have your future at tight end, future tight end one, excellent steal, try on insane potential, and then somebody you can kick into guard, a great guard as well. And then Lorenzo Neal has a high floor chance with Michael Pierce being there. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.